You're going to break limits this year. And you're going to set new records. Financial limits, mental limits, psychological limits. You're going to make more money this year than last year. There is a God that with us. The God that then steal is with us. El Shaddai is with us. This year, the God of heaven has crossed over with you. The God that can consume the enemy has crossed over with you. We are not in this battle by ourselves. I see lands being purchased. I see homes being purchased. Eyes have not seen. Ears have not heard. Neither have it entered the heart of man. The things I have ordained for you for 2020. I'm excited about the word I want to share with you. I've been talking to you now about covenant. And as we winding down to the end of the year, when you finish Christmas, I hope you, you had your turkey. I hope you enjoy your cookies. And, and um, we're going to go right into um, a subject I want to teach to you. A message I want to, um, I, I believe, is going to bless you. I want to call this message today, Living Above the Fear. Living above the fear, facing your tomorrow with confidence. Living above the fear. Oh my God. Facing your tomorrow with confidence. We can do that. We can do that because we are supernatural. We are not normal human beings. If you try to be normal, you will live in fear. I was talking to someone this morning on the phone, and uh, I was just calling him to ask him a simple question, <laughs> you know, a, a business question. And before I even finished the conversation, he was going on talking about what the governor is saying and about the virus and, and blah, blah. I'm saying, I just want to ask you a business question. But there's some people who in the world, their life is governed by fear. Their life is governed by fear. But you and I can live above it. <laughs> you and the family, do you hear me here? We can live above the fear. And we can face our tomorrow with confidence. You know, I, I was telling someone recently, I said, I'm so thankful that I was born in the Caribbean. Now, I love Canada. Canada is my home now. But I was thankful that my roots came from the Caribbean. Because life, it doesn't matter how bad things are in Canada, it's not as bad the way I was growing up. I grew up, my mom cooking three stones. And then we, we come into prosperity. When my, when my dad um, started to cut trees down and, and, and turn coals and, and put coals on a, on a pot and, 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 a, and a piece of um, a little metal plate, Similar to when you go camping. You know, you go camping, you have a little, little wood there. We graduate from three stone to, to a little, little bit of a little um, steel pan and, and coals. And then we eventually we went from an outhouse to an in-house. So, so it doesn't really matter what I'm experiencing in Canada. I'm still experiencing the blessing of God. So that's, my, that's, that's become my background. So that's why I'm always thankful for what God has done. And God, me as a little boy in the Caribbean, I told you before, living in faith, listen to me. Most, I have a picture here in, in, in my book here. Of, I, took, I took 15 of my leaders back into the Caribbean so they can see where God took their pastor from. And some of them were shocked. The, 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 the poverty, the, oh, it was bad. And, and, and I let them know, if God can do this for me, he can do this for your kids, grandma, grandparents. If God can save me, come on. He can save your, 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 your grandkids. I don't even go see this here. This is the church I used to go to. This church I used to go to right here. Right here. I'm a church here. And, 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 and that's my leader. See, that's Christopher. Christopher wearing his... Chris wearing, oh dear Lord, Chris wearing this hat and, 
and dress shoes and, 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 and swimming shorts. That's Christopher. <laughs> That's Christopher. <laughs> Praise God for Christopher. I love Christopher. But these are my leaders looking into, looking into the classroom where Pastor grew up. This I went to school. This would have called me a dummy. This would have told me that nothing good would come from you. Do you hear me here? And, and this where this, this is a funny, these, these teachers here within, within a, a, re, a, um, a reenactment. Okay, these are people that were in my class. <laughs> this, this woman here, this lady here, mm, very interesting woman here, this one here, these are also my classmates who know teachers in my village. The same classroom. And I'm sitting down in the chair. That's what was called a dummy. That's what we we'll call nothing good will come from you. So that's why I'm, I'm, I'm so happy. What God has done in my life. And if you are trusting God, if you, you, if you grandparents, mothers, have a child and drug, have a child that, that not doing good, you keep trusting God. You keep believing God that there will be a turnaround. Yes, it's possible. How do I know? I'm the proof. Yes, I was a bad boy. I was a bad boy. But God's grace came, knocked pride out of me, knocked fear out of me, and knocked shame out of me. And I'm not going back to load the ball. Praise God. So we can live above the fear. And we can face our future. We can face, oh my God, we can face our tomorrow with confidence. Living with expectation. We can live with expectation. We can live with excitement. We can live with, with um, anticipation of something good. Yes, it's a choice you make. Both fear and faith is a choice. Yes, I believe that. Both fear and faith is a choice. Now, I want you to go quickly to 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 13. And there are three powerful words I want to bring out in this teaching as we get ready to to face 2021, praise God. We just celebrate Christmas. We know we're entering the 2021, and and you can face your tomorrow with confidence. It say, and now, and now, not tomorrow. And now, abide faith, hope, and love. These three. And the greatest of these is love. The greatest of these is love. Hallelujah. Whenever Satan wants to destroy a family, want to destroy a nation, want to destroy a city, he release a demon and that city and that region in that home called fear. Just like those of you that live in faith, I do a teaching years ago on the seven spirits of God, the seven manifestation of, of, of the Holy Ghost, the, the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of, 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 of the fear of the Lord, the spirit of understanding. These are manifestation of the Holy Spirit. And each manifestation of the Holy Spirit has a different operation. The same with fear. Fear is Satan's greatest weapon. And if you can um, rise above fear, you paralyze Satan. You paralyze his work. And these Three powerful forces I want to share with you. When you um, learn about them, even hearing about them, wash your mind with these principles, you will rise above 
fear. Remember, fear, hear this now, fear is both psychological and fear is also a spirit. It is psychological, but it's also a spirit. It's a spirit. And, and, and sometimes the psychological aspect of fear can be dovetail with the spirit and it gets very bad. But either way, God has a plan. God has an antidote where you can rise above it. Glory be to God. So, Satan's strategy is to want for you and I to live in the realm of fear, to live in the place of fear, because when fear is operating, there is no faith. When fear is operating, there is no hope. When fear is operating, there is no love. And these three combos choke the devil. Yeah. You know, there are many acronyms for, for, for fear. Some say it's, it's, it's false evidence or appearing real. That's beautiful. False evidence appearing real. But, but fear, I, I, if, you, if you have my book, how to program yourself for success. I have an entire chapter in, in my book where I'm, I'm, I'm dealing with I'm dealing with fear. May Vanessa, you could find that section for me. In I want some references to that today. Please. Fear is, is your anticipation. You anticipating evil. Yes. That's what fear is. Is a anticipation. Can you help me? Is an anticipation of the worst outcome. This one here. Is the anticipation of the of the worst outcome. You you, you assume the worst will happen. Thank you. You, you. you assume the worst will happen. One, I think, was this man says, um, this is what he said here. This is a psychologist said the statement. I'm not going to mention his name intentionally. He said, do what you fear and fear will disappear. I like that. He said, do what you fear. Do what you fear. And fear will disappear. That's what he said. That is what Apostle Everton is saying now. Many people become paralyzed because of fear. <laughs> in fear, in fact, fear has stopped millions of people from doing what they know they're supposed to be doing. Fear has stopped millions of people from doing what they're supposed to be doing. Webster's defined fear. I'm talking about living above fear. Facing your tomorrow with confidence. Living above fear. Facing your tomorrow with confidence. We can face our tomorrow with confidence. Webster's defined fear as believing. This is strong stuff, man. This is Webster. Mr. Webster defined fear as believing and expecting the worst to happen. Huh. You believe in. You, you see, I'm telling you, it's not normal. Fear is not normal. It's both psychological and um and spiritual and when they come together when 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 the, when the psychological aspect of fear and uh, the demon of fear enter into a covenant this is bad news where fear is 
um, believing and expecting the worst to happen. Fear, Webster said, is actually anticipation of evil. Wow. Fear that something bad will happen. Hear this. And I know this very well because I will deliver from the spirit. There's a connection between insecurity and fear. Insecurity. I'm not good enough. That was my problem when I came to Canada. I'm not good enough. I'm a black man. I have an accent. No one will listen to me. Why would anybody come to my church in a way? I'm not good enough. See, 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 these are, these are insecure demons. And if you keep thinking this way, I'm not good enough. You see those who happen to you? These are insecure devils. And then fear comes in and reinforce, I told you, don't try that. Don't, don't, don't try that. Yeah, I know what I'm talking about. I mean, I mean, I mean, who would listen to you anyway? You, you, you start it sometime? You, you, you speak with an accent? I had to overcome that devil of fear. Yeah. And when, when fear, and these folks are here, right? When fear and insecurity Fellowship with each other. That's why, that's why whenever I sense insecurity, I, I try to run away. <laughs> I don't want that spirit in me, man. Because all my life, that spirit walk around, that spirit follow me. That spirit follow me. That's why I love Apostle Charles so much. He told me when I met him, he said, you're a king. Ha! Huh? You're a prince. Took me to Boston. He said, we're going shopping. Oh, no, no, I'm okay, I'm okay. See, that, that insecure devil. I'm okay, I'm okay. I wasn't okay. I had big holes in my shoes. What caused that? Because I was, I was raised, number one of the 15 of us, <laughs> everything passed down to me. Yeah, every time I sense that devil, I come against that devil I'm going to bite the head of the devil and spit it back in his face. <laughs> you got to be, be bold with the, that, the spirit of insecurity because it will take you down. Hey, for example, you're married. You know, my husband doesn't love me. You know, I'm, I'm gaining too much weight. I'm this. I'm that. Blah, blah, blah. See? It's the devil's. No, 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 no. You're the best. You're the best. My wife doesn't love me. My wife is this. People doesn't love me. My boss doesn't care about me. Those are insecure devils. And you have to attack it immediately with these three combos. So, it, it, it is um, your anticipation of evil. Fear that something bad will happen. The Bible called fear a spirit. Fear is more than something psychological. Fear is a demon spirit. And this evil spirit is an enemy of God. And it is a destroyer of destinies. It's a destroyer of destiny. Let's look at how fear destroys destinies. Look at Job chapter 3. Job chapter 3. You, you, have to, you have to attack fear. Say, I have to attack fear. You have to attack fear. You cannot tolerate fear. When you sense it, it might be something psychological. When you sense, I will teach you. I, I decide to do a webinar. And a number of months ago, I'm, I'm going to try to have it again in, in February, in January, about how to lose fear from your soul. 
how to lose it from your soul. Hopefully today I will teach you how to lose it from your soul. I remember, man. June 3rd is the glory. When I moved to the U.S., Apostle Charles, he had this cough, just coughing. And I, I was watching this he would do. I mean, he laid hands on himself like, like this, loose. I said, hey. And the cough left immediately. He said, loose. See, he was talking to the spirit. It left immediately. That cough left immediately. That's what you have to treat devils this way. So I'll teach you later on. How do you attack insecurity? How do you attack fear at that level? Oh, yeah. And sometimes it may left for a season. It may come back again. But you attack it again. But that's later on. Later on, I will show you. You got to be nice to me. Praise God. By sharing. <laughs> Share, 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 share. But Job, you got to attack fear. You cannot keep fear around. You got to kick it out of your mind. You got to kick it out of your mouth. Job make this statement. Job said, for the things, this is Job talking. For the things, for the thing which I greatly fear. The question, what was he afraid of? He was afraid of his kids dying. Oh. He was afraid of his, his wife betraying him. He was afraid of his children backsliding. And it happened. Why it happened? He tell us how it happened. Job said, hear this, pay this. Listen to the pastor here. For the things which I greatly feared. The things that I greatly anticipate. Is come upon me. And that which I was afraid of. Whew, is come unto me. So Webster is right. Webster who was a believer. I have a, 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 a funny joke about Webster, why he wrote the dictionary, but that's a different time. <laughs> I heard his wife was asking him this question. What do you mean? What do you mean? What do you mean by that? What do you mean by that? So he wrote, that's, he wrote the dictionary. Say, here it is. Look it up. <laughs> so he said, okay, I'll help you. Just in case you know what I mean by that, here it is in dictionary. But anyway, come on, man, it's Christmas season. Gonna be happy. Don't tell my wife this, okay? <clears throat> That's what I heard. He was a dictionary. <laughs> There's some big ones <laughs> based on the type of marriage you have. <laughs> They're small dictionaries. So he gave his wife a big dictionary. <laughs> based on the type of relationship you have. So Webster says, Webster says, he defined fear. As believing and expecting the worst to happen. Wow. You expect the worst to happen. Someone says, well, I don't know what the pastor was. Well, well, that's what fear, that's what fear is. It's not normal. It's a spirit. Also, too, fear is not you. Fear is not you. Fear is a spirit. It comes on you to influence you, to enter a covenant with you. But you say, get out of my house. Leave my mind. And you do what this brother said. David um, Joseph says, do what you fear and fear will disappear. Job said, the thing I was afraid of has come upon me and that which I was afraid of huh, visit me said it with me 
I refuse to be afraid. I said it so many times. I, I said it so many times. I refuse to be afraid. I refuse to be afraid. Put that in your vocabulary. I refuse to be afraid. Greater is he that's in me than he that is in the world. I said to you, I, I defeat you. I will defeat you in this situation. Lack, I will defeat you. Sickness, I will defeat you. I will paralyze you. I will destroy you. I refuse to be afraid. You talk this way. It's a spirit. Lack is a spirit. Rebellion is a spirit. You say, your spirit of lack, I destroy you. I grind you like powder. Get out of my life. Get out of my finances. I'm a child of God. I'm a child of destiny. Greater is he that's in me than he that is in the world. Yeah. Your spirit of a barrenness, you leave my life. My womb will produce in the name of Jesus. Yes. Yeah, you talk. Yeah. For the things which I greatly fear is come upon me. So, so, so what happened? Whenever you sense fear, remember now, fear is not you. Fear comes to you. It's not a part of you. The Bible said God has not given what? A spirit of fear, but what? Love, come on, power, and a sound mind. This is who you are. This is your makeup. You have a sound mind. You have intelligence. You have love. Fear is not of you. Fear is foreign. It comes to you. It want to come into your house. It want to intimidate you. Will you talk to it? You talk to it like you talk to your cat or you talk to your dog. <laughs> Get out of my house. No, no, no. Come on, it's Christmas. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, <clears throat> so you said the fear is believing and expecting the worst to happen. So you can't do that. You can't believe that anymore. Now, Many times, when you sense, I was saying, let, let me interject this right now, practically. When you've been overwhelmed by fear, where it can even affect your, your blood pressure, it could be um, a panic attack, whatever it is, it's fear. It's, it, listen to me. Don't try to figure this out. It's, it's of the devil. Simple. A, a number of years ago, I was ministering um, in Uganda. Or oh, Uganda, Zimbabwe, one of those nations. And this pastor had a problem with his ear. He was losing. He wasn't, he was, he wasn't hearing properly. And he, he was being nice to the spirit. He said, well, you know, it's not, it's not too bad. It's just not too bad. It's just, it, it's just a nerve issue. The Bible calls it the spirit of infirmity. So if you just put up with it, it will stay around. So I said, listen to me. That's not normal. In the beginning, it wasn't so. I said, I'll pray for you. I said, loose. See, the command, loose. No, 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 mini, no, 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 Satan, come out, please. No, no, no. You got to talk to fear with boldness. Loose. Yes, pop open. So, when fear comes to you that same way, it's, 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 um, it lands on you. It could be an atmosphere, something trigger it, uh, a, bad, a bad memory, whatever it is. Whatever it is, it doesn't really matter what it is. It's what you do. 
you, you get your you, you get yourself together you recognize you're dealing not just something psychological it's a spirit it's a demon you see this I am born of love that's what you say I am born of love God gave birth to me love dominated me love govern my soul love you, 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 you don't think you speak love govern my mind at this moment now I bind my soul I bind my e imagination I bind my will to Calvary I become one with the price that was paid for me I receive his love now then now you turn to that devil of fear and you be bold you say you spirit of fear loose my mind you spirit of fear loose my home you spirit of fear get out of my finances you spirit of fear i will not tolerate you get out get out and you keep talking until there's a release that's what you're doing there yeah okay it's a spirit but the Bible said, perfect love, drive it out. Man, I said, these folks are here, right? Yeah. So, so you, 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 you bind yourself, you, you bind your soul, you lose your soul. One is this, I will do a teaching. And the soul. The soul can have different compartments. Let me give an example of this. You, you heard the expression soul tie. Soul tie. I remember when God delivered me from a soul tie. Evil soul ties. And I came to this revelation. That wherever you have any bit of relationship. Anywhere. Your soul remain at those places. So if there was a relationship in Vancouver, that aspect of your soul is still in Vancouver. Texas, that aspect of your soul is in Texas. So if your soul, your soul can be spread out in, in different places. And upon aspect of your soul, there can be demons attached to those things. But you can free yourself. You can free yourself. By you said. This prayer. I call my soul. Back to the land of the living. I call my soul back. To the land of blessing. I call my soul back. From the congregation of the dead. I call my soul back. And the Holy Spirit. Might show you. Where aspect of your soul is located. Take that from me. It's true. Yeah, it's true. Now, I, I might need, I, I can't go into all this right now. I might need to take an entire webinar and teach it that. Where you can, you can free yourself. Where, 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 if you, if you go to Vancouver or you go to Texas, that emotions are not there. I give you an example of this. Um, I think it was last year. It was last year, two years ago, we went into a, something very devastating in our ministry with some key leaders who left the church. Very painful for me. It was last year, right? People don't hit me for years. And uh, I don't want to go into all of that, but it was devastating. 
devastated. And um, I remember, and the Holy Ghost, in his mercy, in his kindness. I remember when my wife and Pastor Meyer were sharing at the front of the church at the embassy. I was at the back after the service, sitting down there, just broken, wounded. And, 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 I, remember, and I remember some people coming up to me that they didn't know, you know, what to do. Okay, he's our pastor. His pastor's hurting. They didn't know exactly what to do. You know, some, some folks will stay away. <laughs> but, you know, it's okay. I remember Holy Ghost said, Holy Ghost said to me, stop it. <laughs> He said, stop your whining. Get up. Went home. And for days I was hurting. And this revelation came to me. How to lose your soul. And I remember when I was in the world and my first semester in Bible college, there was a minister named Carl Thompson from Texas. Two videos. It was teaching about soul tie and how to break soul tie. And I remember while he was teaching on camera, devils came out of me in Bible school. First semester in Bible school. I felt so light. That night last month, last year, I was in the basement of my house. And I remember having deliverance. And to be honest today, if I run into any of those people today, I have no emotions. I have no pain. I'm completely healed from it. Literally healed. Like, like I don't have that. I mean, of course, it's still there. The concern is still there. But that, that sting, that, that, that venom, that pain, it's not there. Like one day I went to one, one of the people recently. I, I, I said hi to them. Well, they didn't say hi to me. It didn't bother me. It reminded me of when I ran into my ex-girlfriend 27 years ago in Vancouver. One night doing evangelism. First semester in Bible school. I run into her. I was shocked. There were no emotions. I'm like, wow, what happened? What happened? I was delivered. That devil was gone. That fear was gone. That shame was gone. And I remember that night, it was like something left my chest, Vanessa. Like something left my inside. And I remember crying, I'm like, so wow, I'm, I'm free. And the following Sunday came back to church. I'm like, he's gone. Because I learned something. I learned you could disconnect yourself from pain. You can disconnect yourself from fear. Because fear is a spirit. Oh boy, what time is it? It's, it's, you can disconnect yourself from this spirit. And you can be free from fear. And you could face your future. You could face your tomorrow with absolute confidence. You can face your tomorrow with absolute confidence. I want to give these three things to you. And when I come back, I would... I would um, share with them to you. First of all, Paul says, now abided her faith, hope, and love. These three, but the greatest of these is love. So, Let's look at these three principles. Because these thing, these three powerful principles you need to get into you. First of all, is faith. Faith is you believe in God is bigger than your problems. 
<laughs> faith is you believing that God is bigger. Faith is you believing that God is bigger than your situation. Faith is, is having confidence in God. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 35. Hebrews 10, verse 35. Family, are you with me here? Hebrews 10, verse 35. Here it is. Cast not away, therefore, your confidence. Cast not away your confidence. Don't let go your confidence. Don't let go what you believe in God for. Don't let go. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Not on things. Not on people. Not on the situation. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Cast not away, therefore, your confidence. Don't cast it away. Don't give up on your dream. Don't give up on your future. Cast not away your confidence, which have great recompense of reward. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Don't give up the picture of Jesus. Don't give up on Jesus. Believe that he can turn this thing around. Yeah. Just rough faith in Jesus. And, and hear this one. Don't, don't have B, C. Don't have those. Have one plan. The Jesus plan. Yeah. Come on. God told me years ago, he said, son, you have to kill every other avenues, every other plans for your life if you want to see my plan for your life manifest. <laughs> I remember back in the days I used to always think, you know, if my partners can give more, see, I'll be okay. If the church, the church, if the church members can, can be responsible and, and, and tithe, the church will be okay. See, I'm making my partners my source. Come on now. I'm making the church my source. And this was the big one. Things doesn't work within Kelowna. I always go, to, go back to Providence. I'm with Apostle Charles. And he will gladly welcome me back on his team. I talked to him last night. He's, he's in Kenya. He said, man of God, come to Africa with me. He always called me. Come to Africa with me. And God said, son, you have to kill that. Not to kill my relationship with him, but kill my dependence. And that stream. He said, you would never, come on, I'm talking to you here. He saw me, you would never see the fullness of your potential. What I have for you, unless you give up all those other places you can look to. He said, look to me and you will see the greatest manifestation of the glory of God. Yeah. No, that has to grow on you. He said, cast not away your confidence which have great recompense of reward. That's faith. Then hope. Hope. What is hope? What is hope? Hope is the picture. Oh boy. You have in your mind. Is the picture of something better. Sometimes you have hope before faith. And that's okay. Sometimes all you have is hope. Hope is a great virtue. Hope is, is anticipating something will happen. I know, I know, something will happen. It's having a picture in your mind of a better outcome. Yeah, and you have to, that's where this book here, this book is a picture of hope. How to reprogram yourself for success. How to intentionally turn scriptures into pictures. How to turn 
Let me tell you something, man. I remember when my wife had that eye problem at nighttime when I was up with her and she's crying because someone paint in her eyes. And I, I remember with her and, and having putting drops in her eyes and knowing she cannot see from the eye. And I remember all I could see, I would paint pictures in my eyes, in my imagination. I was working on my hope that she will see from that eye. Hope is a virtue. Hope is, is anticipating something better. Anticipating. I remember when my leg was frozen. I would, in my imagination, I would see my leg completely healed from that numbness. I remember seeing in my imagination my toes moving. When I looked down, my toes were stiff because of the back problem. Whew. I remember hoping the day would come when I would have my Canadian passport and I would visualize me traveling and going to the U.S. consulate, to the U.S. immigration. And rather than putting my hand down and that, that scan, I would give them my Canadian passport and just close my arm like this and say, yeah, watch my passport now and, and let me enter your country. Come on. I would imagine that. That's hope. Paul said in 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 8, But let us, but let us who, who are of the day, but let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate, the breastplate of faith and love and the helmet of, of the hope, the helmet of the hope, the helmet of anticipation. Rather than you anticipate bad things to happen, oh, be positive and anticipate good things will happen. Yeah. Yeah. Anticipate. These are spiritual laws. Anticipate. Yeah. You think, imagine, dream. Get my book from Dubai. My, my friend from Dubai, I call him my friend. The one in thoughts, the prince from Dubai. Some folks have issue with him, I don't. I love people who dream, who think. I'm going to Dubai next year. I have to go back to Dubai. Just to dream. When I was in Dubai, there is one and, and thoughts. When I was in Dubai, oh, there are banners in Dubai. Banners on the streets of Dubai. All things are possible. Eh? In the country, banks have statement, if you have a dream, we can partner with you. Eh? I mean, I'm like, what, what kind of place is this? Expectation, anticipation. That the king put statement, if you can dream it is possible. Wow. He put a statement out recently. He said, This virus is not bigger than the people of Dubai. <laughs> That's what he's saying compared to some of our governmental leaders. He said, he said, he said, this virus is not bigger than the people of Dubai. You know what he said? In one of his books here, Flashes of Wisdom. Yeah. Someone here, someone says, is he a believer? I don't know. I don't care. I love people who think positive. He said, he said in this book here, he said, there is no impossibilities for the people of Dubai. No impossibilities. I mean, who talked this way? Someone from the seed of Abraham. He said, there is no impossibilities from the people, from the children of this great nation. Can you imagine going to a classroom with a teacher who impart that type of mental image into our student? 
Can you imagine if our leaders would stand in the camera and said, the virus is real, but we will conquer it. Can you imagine the hope that will come to people? But no, they live in fear. Because fear feed their agenda. But this man from Dubai said, we will destroy this virus. And this virus will not destroy our potential. Wow. Whoa. That gives you hope. Can you imagine having a coach, a life coach, that talk that way? You're having a down day. That's why as a pastor, I have to be that way to you. I have to tell you, even sometimes your dreams look crazy. I have to say, hey, if you believe it, I'm standing with you. And then go and pray, oh God, God help. Help, God help, help. Hope, that's hope. This man from Dubai, he, he said, I'm going to turn the desert into a beautiful city. Now, his dream now, his dream now, and people in the world think he's crazy. His dream now is to put a, a city in the middle of the ocean. <whistles> Give me friends like that, and I beat the devil while I'm sleeping. Yeah, that's hope. Hope, no fear. Anticipating something better. Paul says, Paul said, but let us who who of the day be sober, put on the breastplate of faith and love, and the helmet, the helmet of the hope of salvation. And then first John, I'm closing here, I'm winding down. First John chapter four tells us, beloved, if God so love, uh, so love us, we ought to love one another. Verse 2, for no man have seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us. And his love is perfected in us. -hoo -hoo -hoo. Verse 16, verse 16, this is powerful. And we have known and believed. In the love that God have to us. God is love. And he that dwelleth in love. Dwelleth in God. And God in him. We're the one that says perfect love casts all fear. Did the wrong scripture. Find it for me. It's a perfect love. Cast out all fear. Yeah, but that's just love. But this part here is said here. God is love. And, and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God. And God in him. One scripture said, perfect love. Find me, Vanessa. Perfect love. Love that are mature. Cast out fear. It eradicates fear. Those are three things I want to leave with you. As you face your tomorrow. Living above fear. Living above the fear. Facing your tomorrow with confidence. Hope. Faith. And love. Here is. It said there is. There is. No fear in love. No fear in love. Because I am born of love. Because I spend time with Jesus. Because I love him. Fear cannot operate. That's why I said before. You said I'm born of love. I'm born of love. Fear. You have to leave. You have to go. And you said I lose my soul from that fear. I rebuke that fear. I bind my soul to love. I bind my emotions to love. Therefore, there is no fear in love, but perfect love cast out fear. Because fear have torment. Yeah, it torments you. 
And he that fear is not made perfect in love. Wow. So, if you're still living in fear, just get some download of love. Spend time with Jesus. Don't condemn yourself. Just hang up with Jesus. Hang up with his word. And his word will drive out the fear. Come on. Now, for example, if you say loose, when there was in an ammo years ago, and this guy was with me, he said, Pastor Weeks, I don't understand this. I say loose, and nothing happened. You say loose, and things happen. That is a difference. It's not in that word loose, it's what's inside of the loose. It's what's inside of the loose. It's the revelation inside of the loose. So when you say loose, and you know I'm born of love, I'm a product of love, and that love that's in me comes to my words when I say loose, that's the love. That cast out the fear. Church, we are going to face 2021. Anticipating the best. Anticipating great and mighty things. Anticipating awesome things. Now, I want to give an opportunity to... To bring your love gifts, your tithes, your offering. Maybe you, you missed the offering teaching at the beginning. So I want to give an opportunity to, to, to bring your tithes. I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to believe that God is going to move on your behalf. Information is on the screen of how you can give, how you can bring your tithes, how you can participate the Bible says those who sow the word spiritually should reap of your physical substance I love you so much I'm looking forward for these lockdown to be over we can get together again let me pray for you Father thank you for everyone that on this broadcast this morning I thank you for the Holy Ghost I thank you for the spirit of love that is reaching out and rebuking the fear and rebuking the uncertainty I bless you this morning in the name of Jesus I declare victory in your hope I declare peace in your home. I rebuke anxiety from your life. Stress from your life. Fear from your life. In the name of Jesus. I love you so much. Remember our countdown to greatness service. This time it will be different. The first time in maybe 18 years. We're going to be start at 7 o'clock. I'll be on the camera. Talking, sharing what we can anticipate in 2020. 2020. And we can face that with confidence and certainty. Thank you. I love you, church family. I miss you. I will see you soon. God bless you. Bye bye. To purchase your complete copy of this life changing message or other messages from Apostle Everton Weeks, visit our online store at mlmi.org. That's M-L-M-I dot O-R-G. Or by phone at 1-250-763-2993. Come join us live, Kelowna, BC, Canada, or any of our church locations. And remember, life without purpose is just an experience.